Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you to our Sunday night service. And I know that you will enjoy this service tonight because there is lots in store for you. Tonight we'll be talking about the loving Father. But just before we have a special song and then the sermon, let us please bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for this week, the beginning of the week that you have given us. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, dear Lord, throughout our lives. And we praise you and we continue to have faith that you will bring us through this coming week and for the rest of our life. Bless, dear Lord, that we will see you as a loving Father who is guiding and who is protecting and who is preparing a place for us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. A great day is coming, heaven's gates will open wide, and those who love the Lord will enter in and join with our loved ones who in Jesus Christ have died. Our eternal life together will begin. And the Lord himself will greet us. Oh, what joy shall fill that day when with the smile of the proudest father he looks at us to say Welcome home, children This is the place I've prepared for you Welcome home, children now that your work on earth is through, welcome home, children, ye who have followed so faithfully. Welcome home, children. Welcome home. loving father. You know, dear friends, it is common for human beings to view God as a hard, exacting tyrant. Sometimes when we think of God, you know, we just remember stories like how he drove Adam and Eve out of the garden, 
how he flooded the world when everybody, you know, except Noah's, Noah and his family were sinful. And he caused all of them to drown in that great flood. Sometimes we just think of God as bringing fire and brimstone unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Oftentimes, you know, we hear someone on hell's consuming fire. And so our opinion of God is mostly one of judgment and punishment. You know, dear friends, it is sad that many individuals join churches and sometimes do good deeds simply because they don't want to go to hell and not because they see God as a loving Father who rules the universe in truth, justice, and love. It is even common for individuals to view Jesus Christ as the good one. Jesus, the one who was about feeding people, the one who was healing, the one who even raised the dead, and sometimes see the Father as just the one who is waiting for them to do wrong so that he can send them to hell. But I must tell you, dear friends, that it is mission on earth. Jesus used every opportunity he had to portray God as a loving father. As a matter of fact, when his disciples asked him, can you teach us how to pray? Jesus told them, according to Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 12, he told them, when you pray, say, our father which art in heaven. In other words, Jesus was teaching them that God is love and God is a loving Father. Our Father, which had his heaven. And because they knew how a good Father could have been, they could have understood what it would have been for God to love them as a Father who is in heaven, an all-powerful, almighty Father. Oh, dear friends, in John chapter 10, verse 13, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. So if you see me, you have seen the Father, according to John 14, verse 9. And John 3:16, the most popular text in the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever may believe and believe it in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, I would like to tell you, dear friends, that whosoever means whosoever, and whosoever includes you. Jesus was saying that God loved the world to that great extent. He so loved the world that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, dear friends, in Luke chapter 15, Jesus portrays God and the kingdom of heaven as love. In verses 50, um, 4 to 7 of Luke chapter 15, Jesus speaks of a lost sheep. The sheep was lost out in the wilderness. Doesn't know how to get home, but a shepherd went for the sheep. And Jesus says that the shepherd left his ninety and nine and went for that one sheep. And I must tell you, dear friends, that if you were the only sinner on earth, Jesus would have died for you. That is how much God loves us. God would have separated the Godhead. The Father and the Holy Spirit and the Son would have separated and send the Son down to die just for you, if you were the only one here on earth who was sinful. You know, um, in that same chapter, John chapter 15, Jesus speaks of a coin that was lost. A lady lost her coin. And he said that she would turn over everything in the house. She would sweep the whole house, look under every rug, under every chair, under every table, just to find that coin. Because that coin was precious to her. 
And so the woman seeking diligently for the coin, when she would have found it, would have rejoiced. And I must tell you that there is great rejoicing in heaven, dear friends, over one sinner who turns from and, and repents and accepts Christ as a savior. Because that is how important God sees us. As a valuable coin that is lost, as a sheep that is lost, that God would take upon his shoulders as a shepherd would carry the lamb on his shoulder through the rugged paths and would bring it to safety and rejoice with his friends. Oh, but dear friends, I must tell you that no story in the Bible, in my opinion, speaks more about the love of God than the story of the lost son. In Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 32, there is a story that tells us of a young man. And we call that story the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son. But I must tell you that this is a story more about a loving father than a wayward son. Oh, the Bible says that the father allow the son to take his possession. The son said to him in verses 11 to 12 and 12, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 and 12. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. The younger son was brave enough to say, give me the portion. Both sons received portions. But the younger son turned away from his father's house and went out and used his portion foolishly. Now I must tell you that when we think of the love of God, we must understand that God allows us freedom of choice. God doesn't see us as robots. He doesn't rule us as robots. People who just have to do what he wants. God allows us freedom of choice. And so in that story, Jesus explains how the father allowed his son to take his inheritance while he, the father, was still alive. The father didn't die and left the inheritance for him. He gave him his portion while he, the father, was still alive. And it must have hurt the father to know that giving his son the portion, giving him his inheritance, the son could have wasted it. In the case of God, God knows everything. So God knows that when he loves us, when he bestows his love upon us, when he gives us everything, intelligence, give us health, give, give us wealth, and everything else, all the other blessings that come with them, that we have the ability to use it foolishly. And so the Bible says that the son wasted his substance in riotous living, according to verses 14 to 16 of Luke chapter 15. He went out and had a party, wasted his substance in riotous living. You know, I must tell you, dear friends, that sometimes when we look back on life, we will realize that we were foolish. Even now, sometimes we still make foolish mistakes. But sometimes we are quick to say that this young boy was evil because he took his possession and went out and wasted it. Well, I must tell you, that God made Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and gave them everything that they needed, but they wasted it. And because of that, this world is in a condition where only when Jesus comes back that things will get better. And many of us, God has blessed us in many ways, and we still find it possible to waste our substances. You know, but I must tell you, the Bible says... 
Luke chapter 15, verses 17 to 19. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. You know, I must tell you, according to those verses, the son came to himself. He realized that the road he was traveling was a road to destruction. He realized that he was doing foolish acts, wanting to eat pig food. While he, a Jew, should not even deal with the pig, should not feed it, should not touch it, you know, should stay far from the pig. He wanted to eat the pig food. That is how low he had gotten. And sometimes because of the mistakes we make in life, we get so low that we are ashamed of ourselves. You know, people who knew us and look at us might wonder, is this the young man that I knew growing up? Is this the young lady that I knew growing up in such and such a place? But because of our ways, our actions, we have come to a state where we cannot even recognize ourselves. But the Bible says that the son came to himself. After realizing his ignorance, he decided that I will go back to my father. You see, I must tell you, dear friends, that it shows that the son knew his father. The son said that so many hired servants, people who are not sons are at home being taken care of by my father. So many hired servants have food enough and to spare. And here I am wanting to eat pig's food. He knew that his father was a loving father. The father would even take care of individuals that were not part of the family. He would include everyone that he loved into his family and everyone that, you know, um, love him. And so hired servants were there eating at the father's table while the son was outside wanting to eat pig food. And that is how it is when we leave our father. When we separate ourselves from God, we find ourselves doing things that you know, we cannot even comprehend. But the son came to himself. He said, I will arise and go to my father. You know, but dear friends, I must tell you, when we read Luke chapter 15, verses 20 and onwards, we will understand that it is not the Verses, the words that the son memorized, that he planned to tell the father, Oh, father, I'm no more worthy to be your son. Make me a hired servant. It is not those things that cause the father to accept him. The father is a loving father. And I must tell you that a son is a son is a son. A son could never be a servant. God sees us as his children, his loving children, and we could never be his servants. He will always entreat us as his children. And Luke chapter 15, verse 20 says, And he arose and came to his father. But, you know, dear friends, when you see but, there is a change in the narrative. There is a change in the story. But, when, the, his, when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Oh, yes, dear friends, the father is waiting for us to come back to him. If you have left the father, if you have gone out, 
wasting his substance, that, the substance that God has given you in riotous living. God is waiting for you to come back. The father could not have recognized the son a way off if he was not looking for his son. He would not have recognized that that was his son if he did not know the son. Because the son was ragged. The son was not looking the way that he left home. But the father recognized him. Verse 20. It says, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. It didn't matter how dirty the boy was. It doesn't matter how much he didn't matter how much he interfered, you know, with the food that the pigs were eating or how much he wrangled with the pigs and, and etc. It did not matter how that boy smelt. The father, when he saw his son away off, he ran, fell on his neck, hugged and kissed him. And that is the father I want to talk to you about tonight. The loving God who is waiting for us to come back to him. And when we come back to him, he is going to embrace us and, you know, hug and kiss us. Because it hurts the father to know that his son is out there wasting his substance in riotous living. God doesn't want to know that we are using our intelligence to do things that are wrong. God doesn't want us to want to know that we are using our finances to do things that are wrong, gambling and smoking and drinking and, you know, um, fornicating and all those sort of things. God wants us to realize that we are made in his image and that we are to worship him and that what he has given us, we are to use it wisely, use it for his cause and use it in his name. But you know, I must tell you, dear friends, he doesn't alienate us. He looks for us to come back home. And like the father of the prodigal son, when the son came to himself and he turned and went back to the father, the father was there waiting, just looking, saw him afar off and he ran and hugged and kiss him. But you know, the only thing, other thing is, the father was preparing for him to come back home. The father didn't just sit there waiting, looking for his son to come back home and did not prepare. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Verse 22 of Luke chapter 15. Verse 22 says, But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and bring a ring, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. The father had prepared the best robe. He had prepared a signet ring for his son because the ring was showing sonship. And he had prepared shoes that his son should wear. I must tell you, dear friends, tonight that God is preparing a place for us. There is happiness outside of this world. God is there preparing so that when he returns, when Jesus returns to earth, he will meet a people who are ready and he will take them to his kingdom. We will be getting crowns. We will be getting shoes. We will be getting rings. We will be shown that we are royalty. We are princes and princesses. We are the children of God. But what is more important about this story is that the father didn't just wake up one day and said, well, my, my son will come back, 
so I'll kill a cow for him. He didn't wait until his son came back and said, well, yeah, yeah, my son is back, so let me go and kill a cow for him. The verses 23 and 24 of Luke chapter 15 says, The father said, And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. And bring hither the fatted calf, the calf that was raised and fatted for this occasion. You see, the father knew his son. And he knew that his son would come home someday. Because he knew the metal, the type of material that he had given his son. And God knows the human race. You see, while things might be going haywire, I would like to tell you that when all is said and done, at the end of the ages, when God had his, has his people and Satan has his, God's people will be in the majority. Because God has made his people to worship. Many of them start worshiping Satan. But God knows that many of his people, the majority of individuals in the universe will turn to worship him. And so, the fatted calf. God is saying, let us feast, let us be merry. Because this my son, this my daughter, was lost, was dead, and is back. So let us rejoice. And you know, that is the type of spirit that goes on in heaven. When one person turns and repents. Because God realizes that my kingdom is being built up. And you might be that one person. You might be that one individual. Who took your substance. And are or have wasted it. In riotous living. I would like to tell you that God loves you. God is waiting for you to come back. You know the fact is the coin was lost. But they didn't know it was lost. The woman went digil diligently looking for it. And when she found it she rejoiced with her neighbors. But the coin knew nothing. The coin is inanimate. So... The fact that it is lost did not matter to it. It mattered to the woman because she had that precious coin. The sheep was lost. He knew it was, it knew it was lost, but it did not know it way back home. While the coin was lost and did not know it way back home, the, the coin did not know it was lost, as a matter of fact. The sheep knew it was lost, but did not wait to know it way back home. But the shepherd knew that the sheep was lost. The shepherd went looking for the sheep because he realized this poor little sheep doesn't know its way back home. And that is how it might be with some people. Hardly know their way back home. But the Lord is looking. He is looking for us. And he is just waiting for us to recognize him as the great shepherd and just run to him and he will bring us safely home. The son, on the other hand, knew he was lost and he knew his way back home. And dear friends, you might be like the lost son tonight. You know you are lost and you know your way back home. You know that all you have to do is get down on your knees or even if you cannot kneel, you pray to God and ask him to enter into your heart and to make you once more his son, his daughter. Bring you back home. And my message to you tonight is, there is a loving father waiting, just waiting 
for you to come back home. Let us bow heads in prayer as you contemplate on coming back home. Dear Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity that you have given so that I could preach your word. I want to thank you, dear Lord, that all of us here listening, including me, need you and recognize our lost um, condition. Recognize that we are in no way to save ourselves. But we realize, dear Lord, that we have to make that turn. We are to come to ourselves and come back to you. And you will usher us in back home. We pray, dear Lord, that we will make that turn. Just come back home. Realizing that softly and tenderly you are calling, just come home. Bless us, dear Lord. Grant us your grace and your mercy and affirm our decisions to come back to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.